All right, hang in there. This is our last video for our lesson five telecommunications. And we're gonna finish it off by looking at networks based off of geography as well as resources. And of course, at the end, we have our wanting to learn more section. So we're almost done, just hang in there. Let's take a look at networks based off of geography. For this, we're looking at how networks are spread out. And the first one we want to take a look at is something called a PAN or a personal area network. It's smaller than a land and it's basically you and your connected devices. So for example, just where I'm sitting right now and you've seen me take out the cell phone and the tablet more than once, I have my computer in front of me, my microphone, my phone, my tablet. This would be my own personal PAN, my personal area network. So. Again, very small, it's you and your electronic devices. Going up from there, we have something called a LAN or a local area network. And I think we've talked about this in previous videos. What we're looking at here are components of a network within a local region. They have to be local, thus local area network LANs. This is what you typically find in an office environment or school or university. For example, your department or your floor, this is your local area network. If you are on a college campus, you might have something called a CAN or a campus area network. So for example, for my graduate work at Texas A&M, we had a Texas A&M wireless network throughout the campus. I work at the local community college. We have a wireless network that runs through the entire campus. These are campus area networks. It doesn't always have to be a college or university, however. It could be, for example, a corporate campus. So for example, Google, Microsoft, they have their own campuses of buildings in their area. So this would be their campus area network. The next one would be a metropolitan area network or a man. And no, I'm not making these up by the way. These actually exist. All these lands, pans, mans, they actually are technically there. So a metropolitan area network is bigger than a can, but smaller than a WAN. It connects lands across a city. So for example, in the city of Houston, you might have all of the public's works on a network connected to the police departments, connected to the fire departments. This would be an example of a metropolitan area uh, network, a MAN. And finally, we have our WANs, which we've talked about in great detail when we talked about the internet, because the internet is a prime example of a WAN, a wide area network. These networks are spread over great distances. So for example, the internet, the military, huge corporations, these all have their own wide area networks. Finally, 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 we're going to break networks into how they share resources. This is what you are networked for, how you get your resources, your information, access to programs, etc., etc. And there are two we have to be aware of. We have client server and we have peer to peer. Client server, as I think I've talked about before, is a situation where you request information from another computer, a, a bigger, more powerful computer. The example I gave was going to a restaurant. You sit down, you order something, your server comes over, they take your order, they bring it to the kitchen, the kitchen makes the food, they bring it back to you and they give you what you've asked for. The server is getting you the resources, it's getting you your lunch, your dinner, your breakfast and bringing it back to you. You as a client are requesting this material, this resources. And there are special operating systems that run on a server, which is your more powerful computer. These are called network operating systems or NOSes. And examples of some network operating systems are Unix, Microsoft Windows servers, various versions, Mac OS 10 server. Your server, your network operating systems usually require specialized training. And so a client server network will typically run more expensive than the next type of system, which would be peer to peer. Peer to peer, all the computers are equal on the network. They all share resources freely. There is no master gatekeeper. There is no master server. They all share equally. Now, they might seem like the easier way to do a networking. It, it works for small networks. So for example, a small network, let's say at a home, a peer-to-peer -peer might work out pretty good. Once you get to about eight or 10 computers, peer-to-peer -peer really starts to break down because Let's say you want something off Bob's computer and everybody wants something off Bob's computer. Bob is in trouble because his computer is going to run really slow because everybody's getting stuff off his computer. 
Or what happens if Bob's not there for the day? All his stuff is on the computer. His computer shut off. So client server is better for a business environment. Peer to peer more for an informal type of environment. For example, friends hanging out, playing video games, or what have you. Okay, finally, I always, as previous videos, like to give you some stuff for more information. And I've got four for you today. And that one, the first one's actually a book. And this one is How Computers Work. It's by Ron White. It's a fairly kind of cool book. It's got graphic stuff, pictures, and explanations about how a lot of components work. It goes from easy to follow to kind of geeky, but it does a pretty good job of explaining some of the more um, technical aspects of computers. The next one, if you have a Droid phone, is Wi-Fi Analyzer. It's a free program, incredibly powerful, and it picks up wireless signals. I actually used Wi-Fi anal uh, Analyzer. I was on the campus of the FBI Academy about five or six years ago, and Wi-Fi is strictly a no-no, obviously, in you know, some law enforcement environments as well as some of your federal government environments because Wi-Fi isn't as secure in some cases as a, a fiber optic con connection. And so Wi-Fi was strictly a no-no, and with Wi-Fi um, Analyzer, I actually detected several wireless signals that were going on on the campus of the FBI Academy. So very, very powerful. You can see the signal strength. You can get a lot of information out of it. You can also use it at home. For example, if you have dead spots, you can find out where those are. The next one is for those of you who really want to geek out with networking, and that would be the Cisco Networking Academy. The Cisco Networking Academy um, is pretty much the academy if you want to learn about Cisco. You can go through different vendors in order to sign up for it, check your community colleges. If you're in a high school, some high schools have technical programs you can start up in. You can also go through private training companies to go through this as well. And finally, a site that I recommend because we were talking about cables earlier, I wanted to recommend this site because it can save you some money on cables, and that would be Monoprice. Monoprice simply has some of the best prices on cables for all sorts of devices, computer, networking, television. They are very, very reasonable. There's, by the way, a huge markup on your cables in your big box stores. Monoprice really has some amazing prices. So before you go drop a ton of money on different media cables, be sure to check them out. Okay, a lot of information. A lot of this pretty geeky. Stuff that you need to know for your intro class. The next lesson, lesson six, covers one of my most favorite topics, and that's information security. So be sure to check out lesson six. If you like these videos, they've helped you in your class, be sure to subscribe and click those like buttons until lesson six. Hope you're doing well in your class. Have fun studying out there, and see you later. Bye-bye.